40 yard dash in terms of the NFL combine is probably obviously the most popularized event. You know, people say it's the most important, people say it's where you can make your millions of dollars, so to speak. I just look at it again as just another tool. It, it definitely, I would say, is the mecca of all athleticism type uh, uh, descriptions. Anchoring the butt kick is the first part of absolute speed training. You know, the first part of that 40, your body will be in a forward lean and your legs will be going like through like a piston-like action. Five yards of ankling, then five yards of butt kick. What Pete's gonna do is he's gonna push his toe to the top of his sneaker right there. He's gonna lock his ankle and he's gonna move forward. He's gonna keep his arm action in line. He's gonna make sure his hand breaks the waist. His head is gonna be tucked. He's gonna move forward for five yards. He's gonna get many reps. And then after five yards, he's gonna complete the cycle. Full range all the way down. And this foot will clear the opposite ankle, okay? Pulling in front. So Pete's gonna demonstrate. He pushes his toe, he's moving forward. And then he completes the cycle all the way through. Now eventually, gravity dictates that your body has to stand up, okay? Now when you do that, you might not actually be traveling at your true absolute speed potential but your leg is now going through a cyclical action, not a piston action. We call that absolute speed mechanics. He's gonna do it one more time. Five yards of ankling, five yards of butt kick. Locks his toe, hand breaks the waist, head's tucked, and then he completes the cycle. Pete's rest period will be walking right back to the top. As soon as he gets back to the top, he's gonna to do another repetition. Based on how well he looks, Maybe we'll do two, maybe we'll do three, we could do four or five. It's all based on that athlete and how he's responding to the activity. So if you're looking at the absolute speed mechanic or that cyclical pattern, the ankling to the butt kick series is the first, I'd say, progression in order to competently teach that type of leg motion. The absolute speed A run is the next progression. So if you think of what ankling does, it initiates that recovery phase of what happens as soon as your foot comes off the ground in that cyclical pattern. You want to reduce that time as possible in order to get quickly into your recovery phase. The butt kick completes the cycle. The A run not only completes the cycle, but after you transition to the top, it gets into a ground preparation phase. What Pete's going to do is he's going to start off at this cone, he's going to build up, do a fast jog for 10 yards, then he's going to continue on for another 20 yards with an accelerated A run. He's gonna combine the components of an ankling and a butt kick. He's gonna do the exact same things. He's gonna push his toe to the top of the sneaker, pull that ankle through. He's gonna increase to the butt kick and give it a full cycle reflex to the front. So he's gonna demonstrate for us here. He steps up to the line. Two, it's an accelerate jog, and then he moves forward, butt kicking, cycling all the way through. His hand's still clearing the hip, his head is tucked, the toe is pushed to the top of the sneaker, and he's pushing his, his foot through to the opposite ankle, cycling full reflex all the way in front and bringing it back up. His rest and recover will be walking back to the top. Once Pete gets back to the top, he'll do another repetition. Repetitions could be anywhere from three to five. We could even get into six, depending on how that athlete looks at that time of the drill during the time of the workout. So we're training ankling, butt kick, coming back around that cyclical pattern of the leg action into that A run. The Moving Claw Series is probably the best ground preparation phase that ties it all together. If you look at the Moving Claw Series itself, your leg can actually travel through the air at almost an identical speed of when you're running at that absolute speed mechanic, let's say from the 20 to the 40 yard line. What Pete's going to do, focusing on his lower body first, you're going to push the toe to the top of the sneaker, he's going to butt kick all the way up to the top. He's gonna clear the knee, he's gonna relax the quad, and then he's gonna attack the ground. And he's gonna give it a one-two and follow all the way through. He's not gonna leave his arms behind. So the first time Pete goes down, we're gonna focus on his lower body, okay? Even though he's gonna bring it all together from the start. Okay? Push the toe to the top of the sneaker. Pete's gonna take off here. Boom. That's it. Butt kick, relax the quad, attacks the ground. Attacks the ground. That's it, Pete. Yeah, the exercise is definitely tied to each other. I would not say one progresses into the next one, but if you're efficient at ankling, you can be more efficient at butt kick. If you're more efficient at butt kick, you can be more efficient at A run. If you're more efficient at A run, you can be more efficient at the moving claw series. We could go single side, we could go just the right leg. We don't, to alternate our feet on which side we're doing, 
it's up to the coach. We could actually do one side, single side, right side, one side, single side, left side, and then maybe the third time through we'll alternate between right and left. But you're not joint loading and actually moving fast forward. You're just undergoing the properties of that powerful leg whip around the cycle of what happens when your foot comes off the ground and so your foot comes into the ground. He did the butt kick, cleared the knee, relaxed the quad, attacked the ground. Now focus on Pete's upper body. Watch how he one, two, and pulls it back through. Watch his arm motion. He gives it a one, two, follows back through. One, two, punch, follows back through. That's it, Pete. Butt kick, relax the quad, tack the ground. If you start to master the complexities of the moving cloth series, that is usually when we see the transfer of athletes starting to run the way their, their, their body's intended to run to that all-important finish from 20 to 40. Now, there's one thing to do drills. It's another thing to do drills that will actually apply to your running form without the athlete thinking about it. And typically when we start to see the mastery of the moving cloth series, we start to see that transfer. Prowler sprint is pure acceleration. And so as soon as you come off the line, your body is again in that forward lean, your legs moving through that piston-like action. It cannot be stated enough that strength, especially high speed strength, greatly enhances that motion. Okay, so Pete's gonna walk over to the prowler. He's gonna get his hands to the mid to the top. Notice how his feet are together, ankles locked, toes pushed to the top. He's engaging his glutes. He's gonna hold for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Knee up, piston action, toe up, knee up. Notice how Pete's knee action is in front of his body. He's accelerating forward. Nice job, Pete. He does a 10 yard prowl up sprint. He's gonna rest. Basically, Pete could have a partner on this side, pushing it back 10 yards, and then Pete may go again. It depends how we set up the drill. It could go 10 yards, it could go 20, it could go 30, might even go 40 yards. And at times we put three, four, five, or even six plates on that sled. People always talk about form running and this and that and joint angles, but let's just talk about strength. The stronger you are, the more force you have that's able to be applied into the ground, the faster you're gonna move. Now I think the rate, the, the rate, the limiting factor is definitely rate of force development. Not how much force you can apply into the ground, but how much force and limited amount of time. Pete's gonna come back here, we're gonna give him a little break. Pay attention to Pete's ankle position, the knee drive, piston-like action in front, the toes pushed to the top of the sneaker. He has a five second hold, he's engaging his glutes, and he has aggressive knee action in front of his body, no butt kick whatsoever. Five, engage the glutes. Four, three, two, one, go. Knee up in front, driving, 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 aggressive knee action, driving all the way. Nice push, way to go, Pete. I think that not only will you get stronger through the Prowler series and able to get that piston-like action, but if you look at the angle of the joint, of, of just specifically your ankle joint, that is the rate limiting factor in terms of uh, rate of force development. And if your rate of force development can be enhanced, you're going to be faster, more powerful through the acceleration phase. What Pete's gonna do is he's gonna come over to the fence, he's gonna get a nice forward lean, 45 degrees, feet together, toe to the top of the shoe. He's gonna get his glutes to contract, and he's gonna drive down and attack the ground, straight down, switch to one, switch to the other, and then he's gonna hammer it out, rapid fire his feet, and then he's gonna stop. Okay, here we go, Pete's on the wall here. So how many seconds Pete's gonna go through him? Uh, we could do three, sometimes we do five. It's all dependent on coaching, what the athlete's doing, and what where he is in the progression here. So he's gonna to toe to the top of the shoe, he's got a 45 degree lean, engage the glutes, he's ready to go. He lifts one, starting position. Ready? Knee up. Switch, switch, go! Break. Nice job. So notice how Pete, he contracts, Pete contracts the glute, fires down, attacks the ground. He's not jumping, he's attacking the ground underneath him. For rapid fire, three to five, three to five seconds. Twitch, twitch, go, break. The assisted sprint series is probably the most controversial topic in the industry today. A lot of people shy away from it because it's very dangerous. A lot of people limit it because they're talking about research and force application and ground contact time. I build my entire program around it, I really do. I think that it is the most dangerous thing you can do, but it can also be the most effective. What's gonna happen is we use a machine, it's a pulley system, it's, it's, it's not a stretchy cord. It's a straight cord tied to the fence. We have a belt on an athlete. The athlete is hooked up to that belt. The carabiner is facing down. The string is basically pushed through the hoop. The athlete will start maybe 40 yards down the coach will be about 30 to 40 yards away from him. The coach will, as soon as the athlete starts to move, 
the coach will start to run and pull him forward and we'll decide what increments or how fast or how far rather we want to pull that athlete. So if we want to pull that athlete, if he's going 40 yards, we might want to pull that athlete 20 yards, okay? The thing about uh, overspeed training is um, you have to be very careful, number one. It has to be a constant assistance, which is why you saw us use the pulley system as opposed to a bungee system. It can only assist you very, very, very minute levels above your maximum ability to run. So I'd say on average, you could stay anywhere between three and five and possibly even 7% assisted faster. The people that go against it talk about overstriding. And yes, overstriding could happen with this device if you don't micro progress into it. When I say that, I mean the fast cloth series, again, is, is the exercise. If you can master that and complex it back and forth between the actual assisted running itself, you can be very, very, very effective. I'm down holding the cord, the athlete will move out of his two-point stance, I'll start to sprint with that athlete, I'll pull him so many yards, and then I'll whip the cord off, and the athlete will be propelled in an overspeed manning training manner forward. So working an overspeed training technique, he'll be propelled forward. Now the key component is once you've done the overspeed running, you have to do a lot of neuromuscular work right after it, as well as get back into those moving claw series and so on and so forth. So I like the complex back and forth. Having said that, it's probably the most effective horizontal plow metric you can possibly do because of the rapid stretch reflex that's occurring through the posterior chain. Not only do we do it with our combine athletes, we do it with all of our veterans. We really do because I think that we understand how to teach that speed. The linear three-point start technique is obviously very simple. It is trying to get you into position to number one, go within the rules of the NFL Combine itself. And number two, allow you, without any pausing or decelerating steps, get into your drive, your acceleration phase as quickly as possible. Two feet on the line, toe to ankle bone, right foot four to six inches. The right hand's gonna come right on the line. Left hand fingertips, the head, nose to the knee. He's loading the left leg. Contracts the right glute, left hand up, 1,001, 1,002, block the sun, fire the elbow. So I believe that you have to load the front knee with the shin angle as low to the ground as possible to try to mimic that same type of a drive shin angle when you come out. I believe it's got to be a two foot jump, which is why you see us load the back foot without straightening the knee. I believe that the arm up serves as a powerful lever forward, so which is why we straighten the arm. So once the, the, the reflex of the, the down arm comes down, you can actually come out. We believe in flipping the arm up to almost block the sun out of your eyes. Your mark, mark up saying block the sun. When you actually flip and, and rotate your hand this way, it can act as a powerful stretch reflex lever to propel your upper body into proper position. So we focused on the lower half of his body for the first repetition. For the second repetition, we're gonna focus on his upper body, his arm movement. Block the sun. Fire the elbow. His right hand's down on the edge, fingertips, heads to the knee. He loads the left leg, contracts the right glute, no space in between his cap and his knee. Hands up, 1,001, 1,002. Block the sun, fire the elbow. It's an aggressive technique, and the hardest part of the technique is actually after you get that powerful jump, can you accelerate out? You know, it's very difficult to teach you a football player because you don't have that track background. But I think with assisted running complex with this aggressive technique, it can be extremely effective. If you really want to maximize your gains, doing those two things will achieve it. The kneeling arm drill is very simple. You know, in all running motions, the arms lead the legs. It's very simple. If you can increase the efficiencies of the stretch reflex properties of the arm, you can increase the efficiency of the stretch reflex properties of the legs. Left foot in front, right knee down. Notice how Pete's engaged, his head's down. He's gonna start to swing, the long pendulum swing, right long arm, then he's gonna start to jog. Then he's gonna start to run, note the bounce. Then full speed, full speed force reduction, stretch reflex, clearing the hip, hand clearing the hip. Put your body in a good position just to completely eliminate the legs and we'll focus on that upper body type of action. There's no way to be, be, better way to do that than the kneeling drill series. And you saw we had the four components where we, you start long with the long levers just to get that opposing force reflex down. 
and then you slowly increase into a jog and slowly progress into a run until you're act actually at a high speed sprinting action trying to mimic how efficient your arms could run as you finish. So pay attention to the four different phases, okay? He's gonna switch knees. We typically would have an athlete do the left leg, then do the right leg, rest, then repeat the drill. So left knee down, he's engaged, his head's down. So you start the long arm pendulum first. That's it, now he's gonna go into the jog, into the run, off the ground, full speed, clearing the hip creates the stretch reflex. So we always use that as a tool when we start to see the legs fatigue, when we start to see uh, the, you know, the, the improper technique, usually we'll see some type of a deficient arm action. So we're always, always complexing that arm drill with every single type of a sprint drill we do. Whether it's acceleration, absolute speed, even changing directions, we're constantly doing that refresh of a kneeling arm action because it takes the legs away and it's not gonna fatigue the lower body. And actually, if you have good arm action, it can help propel your legs, which might be in a fatigue state, into proper mechanics. What it tells us is pure athleticism in a linear sense. You know, people that say, well, a 40 yard dash isn't very specific because you're not changing direction. In football, you never run 40 yards in a straight line. You know, that, that's all ridiculous to me. I mean, it's, it's pure athleticism because if you look at the components of accelerating and transitioning and you look at the muscle action that is involved in the cyclical action of that finish, um, you're looking at just the, the explosive and the reflex properties of those muscles. The argument is always, well, why can't they just look at my game film? Why can't you just look at a player's game film? Well, let's, let's just put that into perspective. Let's say that you played hurt in college football. How many times does that happen? It happens a lot. 